Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about Ethereum smart contracts. If you know anything about Ethereum, you'll know that it's a sort of cryptocurrency, sort of uh, decentralized virtual computer, uh, which is its big difference uh, from Bitcoin, another popular cryptocurrency, actually the first cryptocurrency. And Ethereum allows you not only to transfer value in the form of Ether back and forth to different wallets or addresses on the blockchain, they also allow you to create what are called smart contracts. Smart contracts are actually just code deployed to the blockchain, uh, which kind of run logic statements and store state. They don't really do much more than that, but just having that can be extremely powerful. So for example, you can create a smart contract that takes a bunch of ether and stores it until a later date and then gives it back uh, to certain addresses. You can also create a contract that uh, takes in a bunch of votes from valid addresses in order to kind of push ahead um, a proposal in an organization. There are also smart contracts out there that allow people to gamble with their ether. So you send your ether to the smart contract and it basically rolls some dice behind the scenes. And if you get a certain number, you double, triple, whatever uh, the ether you actually sent to the contract. So basically just use your imagination and you could probably create a nifty smart grant, smart contract for it. Now smart contracts in Ethereum are created in a programming language called Solidity, which was created specifically for the Ethereum virtual machine. And it kind of resembles JavaScript. So if you're familiar with JavaScript, getting started with Solidity, Solidity is probably not that difficult. So in this video, I'm just gonna, gonna kind of show you how to create your first Hello World application, I guess, in Solidity, and show you how easy it is to get started. Now, one ref or resource you might want to check out is the Solidity documentation put together by the Ethereum team over at solidity.readthedocs.io. And it basically breaks down the entire language and how to create smart contracts. We're not going to go too much in depth in this video, but in later videos, uh, we might do that. There are several different ways you can actually create a smart contract and deploy it to the blockchain. Uh, there are several different IDEs and frameworks and environments you can use. So basically you'll write your Solidity code, compile it, and then deploy it. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the nifty in-browser IDE called Remix. It was created by the Ethereum team. And you can find it over at ethereum.github.io slash browser dash Solidity. And I'll go ahead and put the links in the description down below. But when you come to this page, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set your execution environment, if it isn't already, set it to the JavaScript virtual machine. So what that means is we're gonna be writing smart contracts and then deploying them, deploying them to a virtual environment that has no effect whatsoever on the real world Ethereum blockchain. That way we can write code, deploy, rewrite it, deploy to our heart's content without worrying about spending any sort of money, um, that kind of thing. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new Solidity file. Uh, we'll go ahead and name it hello. Okay, rename it. And the first thing you need to do at the top of your Solidity file is tell the compiler which version of Solidity 
uh, you are writing in. So you do this with the pragma statement. And in this case, we're going to use 0 0.4.0 or above. So the, the caret denotes that um, you can use a higher version. And then the next thing we're going to do is create a contract. And we're going to call this contract hello. Now, if you're familiar with the Java programming language, uh, you know that everything in Java is a class. So you have a main class, and then that uses other classes and inherits from other classes. and It's just class mania. In Solidity, everything is a contract. So think of a contract as a class. And just like classes in other object-oriented languages, uh, we also have a constructor. And a constructor is just a function that is called at the very uh, beginning of instantiation of the class. So in Solidity, a uh, constructor, constructor is just a function that has the same name as the contract. And the only time this constructor is called is when you first deploy this contract to the blockchain, and then it is never called again. So think of deploying your contract to the blockchain as instantiating your contract or class. So we've got this hello constructor, and we've got this hello contract, but it doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead and create a variable. And variables are easy to create in contracts. They just take a type. In this case, we're going to use a string. And they take the name of um, the variable. So in this case, we're going to name the variable name. And in the constructor, why not set the name to a default? So we're just going to set the name to Bob. And that's it. So we can publish this. So it's published, created, and we have a contract that does nothing. But it's there, and it has an address. Yes, the other neat thing about Ethereum contracts is that they have an address, just like any other Ethereum wallet. So you can actually send Ether two contracts and then they store that value within the contract just like it's a wallet which opens up all kinds of possibilities which we may talk about in another video but the next thing we're going to do is make this contract do something now let's create a function we'll call it say hello uh, we're going to use the function keyword Uh, and then we're going to use two other keywords here. Next keyword is constant. And basically what this tells the Ethereum virtual machine to do is to erase the transaction from the blockchain because this function is not actually changing any state. It's just returning a value. Uh, and then the next keyword is returns. And this basically tells uh, Ethereum what this function returns. In this case, we're going to return two strings. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. So currently, there is no way to concatenate strings in Solidity. So rather than doing something like you would do in JavaScript, returning the string hello plus the, uh, the name variable, which we defined up above, we're just going to return two values, which, allows you, which is allowed in Solidity. solidity. Um, so we're just going to return the string hello as the first string. And then the 
name that we set to Bob earlier. And that's it. So let's publish this again and then create it. So now you'll see we have this function that we can call called say hello. Click say hello and you get the first string hello, second string Bob. But that's all it's going to do. It's going to say hello Bob forever, for eternity. So why not uh, create a way to change the name within our contract? And we can do that with a setter function. So let's create a new function called set name. And that's going to take an argument, a string, and we're just going to call it n. And basically, we are going to set the name again to n. And that's it. So we'll go ahead and publish this again, create it. So when the contract is created, of course, the name set to Bob, say hello, says Bob. And let's try to set it to something else. Why not Tony Stark? We'll set it to Tony Stark. You'll see that the transaction went through. If you say hello again, hello, Tony Stark. And that's a basic Hello World application in Solidity. Uh, in future videos, I'll go ahead and cover more of the actual Solidity language, um, talk about permission functions, payable functions, how to send Ethereum back and forth from a wallet to a contract, from contract to contract, all those kinds of things. But if you like this video, go ahead and hit like, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe to my channel, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.